Let's look at the parenteral general anesthetics now. Parenteral general anesthetics are further classified into inducing drugs and slow acting drugs. The inducing drugs are used for the induction of anesthesia and the slow acting are for the maintenance. The inducing drugs actually have a rapid onset and a short duration of action. That's why we feel the need to introduce slow acting drugs for maintenance. Inducing drugs are propofol, thiopentone sodium and etomidate. Propofol is used for induction and maintenance while thiopentone sodium and etomidate are used for only induction of anesthesia. Propofol has an antiemetic action which is beneficial for surgery because if there is emesis they it might cause aspirational pneumonia. It also finds its use in uncontrollable status epilepticus. It is safe in pregnancy and asthmatics. The adverse side effects are basically CNS, cardiac and respiratory depression, which is not much, not much of an issue if we're using them as general anesthetics because we have measures to control, control all of that. Now, thiopentone sodium is an ultra-short-acting barbiturate, if you remember. As it has HI high in it, thiopentone sodium, so we'll remember this, that they have high lipid solubility, high alkalinity, they are also highly irritant, and they rapidly enter the highly perfused organs, such as brain, liver, and heart. But then they also have a rapid redistribution. That's why they can only be used in induction because they have a short duration and after that they go to insensitive organs such as fat, fat tissues or skeletal muscles. There is high incidence of accumulation on repeated doses. They also have anticonvulsant property. Now an interesting point about thiopentone sodium historically is that it was used as a truth serum or verita serum that like in Harry Potter that is if you've read the book but what happened was in the past it was used in subtherapeutic doses under the knowledge that the person under the effect of thiopentone sodium could not fabricate lies now that is very cool but I'm sad that we cannot do that anymore the next inducing general anesthetic is etomidate it does not have analgesia and it is actually preferred for patients with low cardiac or respiratory reserve because the resp uh, respiratory and CVS depression is minimum. On prolonged use, we can see adrenal suppression. Coming to the slow acting drugs which are used in the maintenance of anesthesia, we have ketamine, benzodiazepines, opioid analgesics, and dexmedetomidine. Medetomidine. Medetomidine. Now ketamine. Ketamine is used, can be used in the induction as well and so can be benzodiazepines. Now a special point I need you to remember about ketamine is that it causes dissociative anesthesia. The one, the one I mentioned in the introduction, remember? The out of the body experience where you think you are in the OT but you are looking at yourself from above. It causes sedation, analgesia, amnesia, and unresponsiveness to command. The mechanism of action of ketamine was already described that it actually blocks the NMDA receptors, redist redistribution can occur, and it causes bronchodilation, so it is better for asthmatics, and it also increases the sympathetic stimulation, so in cases where there is shock and you need to operate on the person, in case of hemorrhage or any accident, then ketamine is, will be the drug of choice. Although it is contraindicated for hypertensives because of the increased sympathetic stimulation. The benzodiazepines actually are used as a pre-operative medicine. It causes anterograde amnesia and the patient forgets the, all the bad things that happens to him in the OT. It also is a respiratory depressant in high doses. For example, lorazepam, diazepam, midazolam, etc. It has poor analgesia. The next class in the slow acting drugs are the opioid analgesics. They are very, very potent. And actually, they decrease the requirement of anesthetic because there is decreased transmission of pain impulse. They can cause sedation and drowsiness as well. They are also beneficial. 
and they increase the pain threshold. Lastly, we have dexmedetomidine. It is actually a central alpha-2 agonist. That means that it decreases the release of norepinephrine in the brain and it causes minimum respiratory and cardiac depression.